Hey, everybody, I would like to bring on our panel tonight uh, a man that I saw recently. Uh, his name is Doug Scott Kramer. And I saw him discussing his life in Scientology. But what really just stopped my heart and just made me catch my breath was his description of how anybody, anybody can become a member of a cult. You can sit there and deny it all you want. And everybody, I would like to introduce you to Doug Scott Kramer, actor and former Scientologist. How are you, sir? Good, Trish. Nice to meet you and your little doggy. <laughs> and your little doggy, too. He's yes, adorable. This is, this is uh, oh, his, his first name is Othram, and that's after a DNA lab that we work with. It's Othram wow. Tex Bug Nugget the First. Gonna have yes. to get you to write that down. I'm never gonna remember that. Can I call him O for short? You can call him O or just Bug Nugget or just Bug. Because he's got <laughs> bug, eyes. bug eyes. Anyway, um I, I I Doug, I'm so thrilled that you're here with us tonight oh, because thanks. I um just I was just popping around because I had Mike Rinder on mm -hmm. and I was reading everything or watching everything I could on on Scientology and the way you described how don't be, you didn't say this, but don't be so arrogant to think that you could never be part of a cult. And I'm, I'm going to give your background just real briefly and, and mm -hmm. feel free to jump in and fix anything. Sure. But um, you were nine years old when your father became a member of Scientology. And he literally went down uh, to the Church of Scientology building, I guess, in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. was it? And Oh, I'm sorry, Ventura. Ventura, Ventura. Cali Ventura, Ventura. California. Yeah. And literally after like one night, one session, he became uh, just obsessed with Scientology. Scientology was going to solve all his problems. And he brought you in on it at nine years old. But you fought it. Mm -hmm. You did not want to go into Scientology. But what happened? I mean, you know, nine year old kid, you got you got older and you were like still fighting it, still fighting it. And then something happened and you gave in to Scientology. What happened? I think a big part of it, Trish, is looking because is my, you know, I trusted my dad, basically. Mm -hmm. So there was two parts going on. My instincts, and by the way, I've learned to trust them 100% nowadays. Mm -hmm. But my instincts, as well as my mother's, told us that evil entered our house. That's how I describe it. Because something was very off about my dad. He was talking different. He had a hypnotized glaze look in his eye. Mm -hmm. And we, he started asking to do this thing called Scientology and he was going to have to borrow a large sum of money from his brother to do so. So it totally hit us by surprise. Just one day he went to work as my father. One day he came back spouting the Scientology thing and we didn't know what the heck he was talking about. So um, I think a huge, huge part of it looking back is there was two things going on. I knew that I didn't like Scientology instinctually and I wasn't going to take to it versus I trust my dad and I look up to my dad and he must know what he's talking about. So it must right. be me. It must be me that actually, because I was rebellious anyways, Trish. I didn't, I, I had problems. I mean, I thought that they were a lot worse when Scientology came into our family because it was mm -hmm. like being super judgmental and they put you through all sorts of things to fix problems that you don't even necessarily have. So right. I came to really dislike myself more and more just with Scientology being in and around our family. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> even though I resisted it, just for your listeners, Scientology probably has the most comprehensive package, or at least at the very top of, of all the cults that you can think of. I mean, L. Ron Hubbard was many things, including a psychopath, but he wasn't an idiot in terms mm -hmm. of being able to put together something that you could sell to intelligent people. And if you, I don't know about you, Trish, but I didn't grow up knowing anything about mind control or hypnosis or the altered no. space of consciousness I was going to fly mm -hmm. into in my teens, you know, doing this auditing, which we can talk about. I had all sorts of incredible experiences and they hook you in very slowly, like any cult. Mm -hmm. It's like being in an abusive relationship. If right. You're love bombed, you're mm -hmm. in the honeymoon phase. Everything's fantastic at the beginning. And then you slowly get brainwashed and led into really crazy shit like 10 hour, you know, 10 years hence. And then you wake up. It's exactly like an abusive relationship. Oh, my God. 
And the initial tools, by the way, are very sensible. There's a trick mm -hmm. and a snag in all of them. Um, again, if you want to break some of this down tonight, we can or, or not. But okay. I'm, it's kind of complex in terms of how see, all people really hear about a lot with Scientology is Xenu, which is their alien story, which only 5% right. of the Scientologists get to because mm -hmm. um, those are confidential. Those are secret. And the initial choruses, you know, a Scientologist might be a Scientologist for 20 years and just do the lower level choruses and go, I don't right. have a problem with it. What's Doug talking about? What's Mike Rinder talking about? What are all these idiots talking about? Sure. It depends on what level you're at as to whether you suss the con or not. Like I said, if you just stay on the outer choruses where you're taught to never go past a word you'd understand, always to look up your words, mm -hmm. uh, very sensible stuff about how to run your business. They have these things called ethics conditions about how to map out your life. If you just stay at the lower levels, um, it can seem very sensible. But even then, there's a whole bunch of tricks and snags happening. For example, mm -hmm. on the communication course, which I assume is what my dad was put onto that day that he came back hypnotized. Right. That actually puts you into uh, a trance state and can set the groundwork for the rest of L. Ron Hubbard's gibberish going into your mind much easier because your defenses have been let down and you've been putting it into a suggestible state. Mm -hmm. so if I had to sum up Scientology real quick, Trish, just in one sure. word, it's, it's, it's hypnotism. It's being really? put Really? I've never heard that. That's interesting. So they literally hypnotize you to. Yes. To, oh, that makes sense. That makes that's sense. why that's a big reason why people. You don't have to be stupid to be hypnotized. Think about it this way. If you were on a stage hypnosis show mm -hmm. and you put somebody in a trance and, and you said, you're a monkey, start acting like a monkey. Are they stupid no. or do we all have the ability more or yes. less to go into a trance, perhaps under the right conditions. So that's, that's yes. kind of how I try to describe it. And when I, I was in a suggestible state from, from around nine years of age, all the way up until the time that I got out in my early thirties mm -hmm. and they have ways of constantly bombarding you, constantly keeping you around in and around the place. Mm -hmm. And constantly doing what they call TRs or training routines, which specifically keeps you in the suggestible state. And you do this all throughout your career as a Scientologist, plus the auditing, which is where you hold the soup cans and they have the e-meter, which people might be familiar with. Oh, that yes. Took me, that took me into states of mind as a kid that I had never experienced. And if you don't know anything about hypnosis like I didn't, it was mind blowing and mm -hmm. sold me completely uh, on Scientology, despite the resistance. So that's a big part of it, is we're not idiots. We just um, are being put uh, into covert hypnosis. We're not told that that's actually what's happening. That's highly illegal too, by the way. Um, really? Yeah, you can't covertly hypnotize someone and mm -hmm. then rob them of their money and their life and their family like what happened to me. But that's exactly what Scientology is. Any trained hypnotist, and they have, they've had, Experts look at this and go, that's hypnosis, what's happening in the audience, that, that communication course. But for some reason or another, it's it, it hasn't been shut down just on that premise alone. You need a license to practice hypnosis and you have to have informed consent. Right. And you say that basically the Scientology came in and just tore your family apart and, and took everything. And it yeah. was based on this, this hypnosis they were able to get in your dad's brain and your brain, and how about your mom? Was she in, in it as well? My mom's interesting because, like I said earlier, her motherly instincts like mine, mm -hmm. my son instincts told us that something was wrong. Right. But he basically made a proposition where if you, because they were considering getting a divorce over this. So it mm -hmm. came down to my father basically saying, if I'm not allowed to do this, you know, we might have to actually break up. So rather than break up, he said to, and he was being trained, by the way, how to manipulate my mom and exactly what to say to get her and me and my sister down there. Okay. So what he said is, and this is a classic line from Scientologist, how do you know what it's about? You've just read stuff about it or you have this intuition about it. Why don't you go down and check it out for yourself before you make a decision? Do you make a decision just based on your feelings? What you have to, you know, go down there and see it for yourself before you get a divorce and before you and before you freak out. That's basically what he said to her. 
So, so of course, she went down there, and what they do is they find uh, your ruin, which again we can talk about later. But that's the way where once they get you down there, Trish, uh, they're going to bring you into a room and do head games with you, which they did with my mother, and broke her down the same way they did my father and me, and we all got sucked in and thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. I want to jump ahead. I'm going to jump around a bit here. So sure. the in the end, and I'm going to put a link up to your website, or your excuse me, your YouTube channel. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty amazing. I was just uh, looking at it earlier. Oh, and uh, let me just put it up here really quick in chat, and I'll put it in the description as well. But uh, it's called Days Not Confused. How did you all end up getting out of it? Or did you? Are you the only one out? No, this thing completely destroyed my family and it caused me to go an entirely different path that I wasn't prepared for, but I'm thankful for it because I learned, I learned a lot through this crazy experience, but no, it completely separated us. If someone leaves science, my, first of all, my parents, I haven't seen them and only rarely had emailed them just a few times in the last decade. So I don't really know. I'm positive they're in Scientology because if they Still. weren't, they would have contacted me. Yeah. And right. also I know they're not coming out during my lifetime. I know that people, you know, people always say like, I hope you get your family back and this and that. And I try to explain that as to my, my family dynamic was kind of cult like too, which was sort of the precursor to us all going into Scientology anyway. So it's kind of complex. My parents are with or without Scientology, I believe them to be what you call a sociopathic, a person that doesn't have a conscience. Mm -hmm. uh, at the, you know, I, I'm not saying that to be mean to my parents. I'm just trying to. Right. I interview Trish, a psychopath on my channel named HG Tutor, and we're on like, interview number 10, I think, coming up. And we're going to do oh, a whole wow. series of, about cults and abusive relationships. And, you know, it was through understanding um, psychopathy and what it's like not having empathy. Mm -hmm. fake empathy, what they call cognitive empathy, not actually having a conscience, even though my parents are like that. And that's taken me a lot of, you know, investigation and soul searching to, to come to that conclusion. I still love them. And I don't think that they're bad people. And they they did what they feel felt is right. You know, my dad is just passing on what he believes in. And I understand the power and allure of Scientology. Um, and I was trying to pass it on to, to other people. So I don't blame my parents. I don't, you know, they have no idea and are oblivious to what they actually put me and a lot of the rest of the family surrounding family members, because Scientology had an impact on everybody around us. Mm -hmm. They're completely oblivious to anything I've gone through. And it did almost, I went through a whole PTSD for about a decade. Oh, I can imagine. I, yeah. I can imagine. So, but now, and, and we'll get into the, the, uh, how it easy it can be for people to get into a cult. But now Scientology seems to be slowly crumbling. Uh, I heard Mike Rinder say there's probably only 35,000 real actual mm -hmm. members. Uh, the money isn't coming in like it used to. Mm -hmm. um, so eventually they're being found out. Uh, what, I guess, why, why do people like Tom Cruise and, and Kirstie Alley, defend Scientology so, so, so much so, but yet all around them that they should be seeing all of the, the same things we're seeing these people coming out with these horror stories, you know, that the, the, uh, the membership is dropping all of that. Are they, are they just in that cult mind, even though they're really smart, like you said, really smart people. The indoctrination gets there first. So what happens is if you hear anything, there won't be a single Scientologist probably that will ever click on my channel, for example. Mm -hmm. We were trained um, specifically through a course on how to handle what they call suppressives. Those are people that, let me just make a long story short. There's courses that we do early on to look at the outside world. Anybody that's not doing Scientology as um, unenlightened, the goal in Scientology at the beginning is to get rid of your reactive mind and to put that in layman's terms, all the trauma in your unconscious mind, which is a great thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what actually is happening. It's a hypnosis machine, right? So it's not that um, they stay in it because they we, we just simply know that anybody that says anything negative about Scientology is either evil, a suppressive mm -hmm. person 
or they're simply uninformed and not to be listened to. And I know that that seems impossible from the outside in. Like, how could you possibly, how could Tom Cruise insulate himself right. and just shut down with all this stuff around him? But again, we're back to the hypnosis. You can when you can't see those things mm -hmm. and you just believe in what it's, it's I, like I said, it's, if I had to put it in a really easy way, you go into Scientology, you're being put under hypnosis without your consent. And until you get, usually you have to wake up by getting smashed over the head, losing everything. Something bad has to happen to you. So Tom Cruise is never going to leave unless something horrible happens to him because that's the power of the spell. Mm -hmm. And that's, it takes a hammer to actually break you out of that. That's what makes it so sick and disgusting. And just on the basis alone of what it's actually doing to people, a like I said, a trained hypnotist would be able to go right in there and say, this is exactly what's happening. It's so evil, but it's effective mm -hmm. because if you're having your subconscious program without your knowledge, which happens in television and all around us, it's not, it, it has nothing to do with intelligence or why can't they see that? It's literally like, like you can't, the hypnosis, you can't see it. And also you add in the training of it's, these are called thought stopping cliches and mind control parlance. Meaning as soon as someone says, I heard that L. Ron Hubbard is, is it, that's it. You shut down. I, I can I just say something about, no, what about you know, and they, no, no, I was just giving you an oh, example. Sorry, like, gotcha. Let's say, let's say I was somebody trying to mm -hmm. talk to Tom Cruise and say, but what about Zeno? That's it. There's no more. You're evil, Trish. You know, if you mm -hmm. want to say that. I have another question. What have you heard about all the abuses? I was just watching um, John Travolta on Inside the Actor Studio uh, last night, where he's um, being asked questions. Uh, he's talking about Scientology, and he's completely oblivious and brain dead as to how it's coming across to the audience who are sitting there in horror as he's promoting it as the greatest thing in the world. And if somebody asks a question, like it's just, it's just, you, you just thought stop. Have you ever gotten to an argument with someone where you can't figure out why they can't see the obvious and you just banging your head up against Oh them? yeah. Yeah. Well, in their mind, the program got there first. So anything mm -hmm. that you say that's against Al Ron Harbor, we already knew he was the greatest man in the world and we knew that the that you people were lesser by not having your react that was just your reactive mind speaking you know nothing about scientology mm -hmm. again trish why don't you go down and check it out rather than just listen to what you hear on the television that's right the standard response that a scientologist it, will say and it worked for years and the the yeah. in intimidation that they would do to people that tried to leave yeah very terrifying but now all of that is slowly uh just crumbling right <laughs> I think it is. Yeah. I honestly didn't think I would see the day happen when this thing might get taken down. But I said in a previous interview, some sleazy politician is going to see this as their ticket to uh, have their, you know, tax and uh, status. I don't think it'll be someone with a heart on their sleeve. I think right. it'll be to win an election or something. But yeah, it has so much pressure on it and so much exposure. And you're right. What they call fair game, they're attacking mm -hmm. of critics. That's definitely lessened. I woke up in January 2008 because this book right here it's yeah. called combating cult mind control by steve hassan the number one best-selling guide to protection recovery uh, whatever that says by the way i'm not getting paid and i you know i wouldn't recommend steve's newer books i'm just showing you what actually uh snapped me out of it because in this book it talked about the fact that i was hypnotized and what is hypnosis and oh here's the all the techniques that were being used against me that i was oblivious to mm -hmm. By the way, on that, he didn't, this guy's an ex Mooney who wrote this. That would be Sung Young Moon from the Unification Church, also known right. as the Moonies. Um, if he would have described Scientology in that book, because a concerned friend from my acting class who knew Scientology was a cult, dropped it off. And I was going to, again, the thoughts, the, th the thought terminating cliche yeah. told me that he's attacking Scientology. I was going to immediately go down to the church, which is uh, here in Los Angeles and write what they call a knowledge report on him. Mm -hmm. He's not a Scientologist, but anybody that's even not a Scientologist that talks badly about Scientology, we go down and report him and we write time, place, form, and event on what this person did. Um, 
my friend Jamie dropped this book off. Uh, this, you know, you just do a whole report. So there's a whole bunch of people that just said something negative about Scientology. That Scientology stacks up files on these people just in case they become a problem in the future. Right. You know? um, anyways, what was the, what was the question? Trish, uh, it, ramble off of? Oh my gosh. Well, I got so caught up now. I can't remember. Um, it was uh, just about it crumbling down now. Oh yeah. 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 I do think that, it will actually, I don't want to get my hopes up too, because I've said before, like I've watched them get away with just when you think you got them, especially with this Danny Masterson trial where it's yes, sexual assault allegations. About. Yeah, this might do it, but I try to not get my hopes up too much because they have so many um, dead bodies and so many, uh, they have so many criminal activities, but they always seem to be above the law. A huge part of that is the tax exempt status that does allow them to be above the law. Exactly. So that, and yeah. they got that by harassing uh, the IRS employees and their yeah. families. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they got it by just tormenting them that the they find they showed up at the IRS office of the, you know, the head of the IRS. And finally he said, hey, will you back? I'm just paraphrasing. Will you back off mm -hmm. if we give you tax exempt status? And they did. How could you they get what, away with that? You know what they did, Trish? They have a whole, this is what Mike Rinder worked at for two and a half decades. Mm -hmm. It's called the Office of Special Affairs. It's called okay. their Dirty Tricks Department. Mm -hmm. What they did is they filed individual suits on employees at the IRS. And I believe it was 1,100 people, give or take. It, oh, it might be more God. than that, but I know it's at least 1,100. <laughs> so this Office of Special Affairs they needed to get their tax exempt status because they had a L. Ron Hubbard didn't pay his taxes. Right. Um, so they had a back bill. And if they didn't get this, they're going to go under. Mm -hmm. So they just simply harassed the crap out of these people that were just trying to do their job. And then when they were finally all terrorized, um, one of the Scientology top, top executives went into court, saw a guy named Fred Goldberg. Um, who was sort of the official man that could, you know, make this, that could give them their tax exempt status mm -hmm. and whispered in his ear, you know, if you give us our tax exempt status or we work something out, all of these lawsuits will go away overnight. And Fred Goldberg looked at him and said, really? And he said, yes. And the next thing you know, they did the most snaky, illegal um, deal uh, with the IRS, which mm -hmm. is so not standard, it's ridiculous, but they they sort of set a precedence for being able to hornswoggle the IRS like never before. And also that Office of Special Affairs, by the way, mm -hmm. it was commented on by the CIA itself that their intelligence apparatus is far more effective than the actual CIA of the United oh my States. God. That gives you some idea of how brutal they used to be. And mm -hmm. Back to your point, yeah, it is. We, I would have, I would have been terrified to talk out about this in the '90s or whatever. But I came out in 2008, January 2008, right when Anonymous, which was a hacktivist group. Oh, I love, yeah, I love what they remember did. Them? Yeah, tell, Do you tell remember everyone that? what they did. In 2008, they did this huge worldwide protest, and I knew nothing about them when I came out. This book was dropped off on my doorstep. But again, I was in the bubble world, Trish, so mm -hmm. I knew nothing and would not listen to anything that's going on. So I only found out months after I got out that Anonymous, you know, and who they were and what they were all about. Um, I got to tell you, if I would have been inside still and saw these these people outside the church, because I remember that they were where I was at, I would have thought they were a terrorist organization, would have been terrified of these people. Mm -hmm. Everybody was scurrying in the building when they were coming out. I mean, I'm glad they did that. Mm -hmm. But from the, perfect, the, from the perspective of the brainwashed Scientologists, you're terrorizing them. It's, you know, they were very frightened of that group. What did they do exactly? Uh, hold up banners and, you know, very peaceful protests. After a guy named Mark Bunker kind of got on their ass, he's a really um, cool uh, Scientolo Scientologist, ex-Scientologist activist. He was never a member, but he's done a lot of reporting and mm -hmm. it's a very cool way about interacting with these people. And he sort of told anonymous because they were kind of doing threatening stuff that, you know, their first video that, that they put out was like this, you know, ominous voice going, 
right. Scientology, we're going to take you down. <laughs> and it sounded kind of, it did sound like a terrorist cell. Mm -hmm. So Mark Munker said, look, these guys are going to come after you. They're going to get your license plates. They're going to like, you're going about this the wrong way. Do it peacefully. And so they did. So they had banners and worldwide protests all over the world. I think that was actually a huge turning point. I don't think they've ever recovered since then. And where we've gotten up to today, there's so many contributors, everything from the early people like Jerry Armstrong um, and a guy named Arnie Larma, who were really, really took the heat, um, the most of the pressure before you had the later stuff like Leah Remini with her show Scientology in the Aftermath. That came out in 2016. That put Scientology on the map and lessened right. their ability to damage people. HBO's Going Clear, Scientology in the Prison of Belief, 2015. That was great. Had, did you see that? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I watched it over and over. My God, yeah, it's just so, you just, you're just cheering them on, you know? Yes, like, yes. God, yes, get them down. So, yes. um, the, like you said, the big thing will be to take away Scientology's tax exempt status. And uh, I agree with you. I think it's going to be some sleazy politician that'll go, hey, this is my this is my ticket to the big time. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And then they'll be done. Then David Miscavige will be just he'll be done. Speaking of that. Well, they'll go a little bit longer, Trish. I mean, they have billion, a few billion dollars and they could keep going for a little while. And then also, I personally had the concern of what do you do with the poor people when you take their religion away? Because, well, that's well, true. Very good you point. know, because I put myself in their shoes. These are going to be people that are going to need healing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, but their tax exempt status needs to go. Don't get me wrong. And yeah. I think that that's actually going to happen. Yeah, I do That's too. fantastic news, by the way. I've only kind of concluded that or been thinking with that having a little hope just in the last few months because they always seem to get away with everything but this masterson trial man is just like let's let's I think talk there's about potential that. with that let's let's talk sure. about what that would you like to talk about? Sure. yeah um danny masterson is on trial for rape and scientology is playing <laughs> a big part in this because in a nutshell, Scientology, uh, the, the women were Scientologists, if I'm not mistaken. They, they were, were, yeah. And they were told not to go to the police. And they were told to write these reports and they would take care of it. And now all of this is coming out. And it's making Scientologists, Scientology look like they are doing exactly what they're doing, which is yeah. protecting a rapist. Mm -hmm. And it's not going well for them at all. If you could add to that, give us some more information, that would be great. Yeah. Um, so Scientology is not actually on trial, but what's no, what, what's kind of unique in this instance is the judge, remarkably, because Scientology never even is allowed to be brought up. Mm -hmm. So because of the unique circumstances with these gals, they were gaslit and it took them a long time to not only deprogram from Scientology, which I'm sure they're still working on. Mm -hmm. In other words, figuring out that they were in a bad, toxic mind control environment to escape with their lives because uh, they, they were, you know, allegedly, it's not allegedly, I know for a fact that these gals were terrorized, but you have to say words like allegedly because they have a civil suit, which, you know, and that needs to be proven in a court of law. But I know, uh, you know, I know what the allegations are and I'm quite sure they're, they're true just, just cause that's what they do mm -hmm. real quick, Trish, like, you know, they don't fair game as much. Like I can talk out. Okay. And a lot of other people can, but these gals, if you read the testimony of what they are alleging, they're very, very brave women, especially the one that came forward in 2004. So real quick, here's what happened. Between 2001 and 2003, there was three gals that alleged, allegedly were raped by Danny. And to go report that to the church, or I'm sorry, to go report that to law enforcement is an absolute no-no. L. Ron Hubbard has all these policies about what happens if you do. Everything's handled internally. So to go to report like one of these gals actually did, that she was raped to the police, brought the wrath of Scientology on her, where she's now facing disconnection from not friends, family, the whole church, and retaliation. Mm -hmm. And also the ethics officer that dealt with this named Julian Schwartz told her that she was fucked because she went to the police. And she also told her, we don't ever mention the word rape. You need to reword that. <gasps> so there's no, there's it's, and Danny's what oh Danny God. Masterson is what you call an upstat in Scientology. Mm -hmm. And the concept is if you're making a lot of money, if you're a celebrity, if you're a high producer, 
you have ethics protection, meaning you're all good with Scientology. If you don't make a lot of money or you're not progressing up the bridge to total freedom, you're what's called a downstat. And so you're more subject to penalties. So Danny could do whatever he wanted, um, you know, literally whatever he wanted. Right. And it was blamed on the gals as to what did you do to, this is their famous phrase, pull it in. In other words, Danny's the upstat. They're the downstat. So they must have done something in this lifetime or past lifetimes. That's what it caused them to pull that in. So it was their fault, not Danny's. Not his. That's just yeah. appalling. So they, she it went is. to the police. And how did we get to where we are today at a trial? Through a long, long process. And Leah Remedies to be commended for this big mm -hmm. time because I know she's had these gals backs, um, mm -hmm. you know, every step of the way since around 2017. These one, these gals were also featured on a special <laughs> episode of Leah Remini, Scientology and Aftermath, right. which I believe is on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And they had to work really hard just to get that episode on because they had, I'm surprised they did because they had to work around, you know, all the legalities of putting mm -hmm. something like that on there. So <clears throat> basically one of these gals reported in 2004, I believe, and then the other two, unbeknownst to each other, were discussing uh, discussing this and then came together to find out it wasn't some conspiracy. They just happened to find out that they weren't the only one that was allegedly raped. Mm -hmm. So they start. They then went to the police in 2016-ish, I believe. Right. And that's when investigators started. When that first gal went uh, back in 2004, it was she was treated pretty crappy. And it was basically... Mm -hmm. um, we don't have enough evidence dismissed. But then when these other allegations came forward, they finally took it seriously. So it took about from 2016 ish. Like I said, you know, a lot of work on these gals parts, pushing, 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 talking with detectives, try, you know, uh, Leah remedy, you know, throwing her weight in there to get us up mm -hmm. to where we are now where, and by the way, this fucking, I, I don't like this guy at all, by the way. I, Am I allowed to curse? I don't want Absolutely. to run an Absolutely. algorithm or anything for you. Okay. Go right. Go for it. Okay. I'm always cautious of that. Thank you, Trish. <laughs> I don't like this guy at all. And Danny I don't wish, yeah, I don't wish revenge on people, but you know, some people are just evil and a psychopath. Mm -hmm. So I think originally I thought, cause Scientology when they're not on trial, but since they're behind it, mm -hmm. you know, they have a way of running circles around judges and stuff. They just do. Right. That's not happening in this case. And this judge Al Almedo is really, really good. Mm -hmm. And the testimony that's coming out, if people want to know more about that, by the way, there's a guy named Tony Ortega. That's I love Tony. On it. Yeah. And he's doing fantastic reporting on it right. every day. If people want to keep up to date, it's fascinating. The transcripts and everything. So, you know, it's just amazing to, to watch. I don't, again, I get my hopes up, Trish, and I'm like, oh, I probably, I hope I'm not dreaming because I've seen Scientology in the background turn the table so many times. But it looks like this guy's actually going to, I don't know how he's going to get out of this. The, the, he the, can't. The testimony that these gals are making is so brutal and so heartbreaking. And they have such balls of steel. I can't even imagine having to get up there and look at that fucker sitting mm -hmm. right there while they're recounting what he did to him and what he allegedly did to them is horrible. It, it is uh, completely it's a psychopathic. Monster. He's a monster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's being protected uh, because yeah, and he's, he's also really cocky. He walked into the courtroom all, you know, in his little suit smiling mm -hmm. uh, like any psychopath. Um, again, I'm not a professional, but I'm going to, I'm just telling you, that's my diagnosis right. as an opinion. So like any psychopath, he's oblivious to the danger that he's actually in. If he was smart, he would have thrown Scientology under the bus mm -hmm. you know, and claimed, hey, you know, I was brainwashed. That would have been a way out of this. Yeah. he's. I think he's somehow in his twisted mind, he's confident, despite all the testimony going on right in front of him, you know, and his wife listening, mm -hmm. Bijou Phillips and stuff, and Billy Baldwin's, Baldwin's been in there, a little celebrity click. They must just be horrified while Danny's just sitting there going, yeah, I'm going to whip this. No problem. I hope he does it and he pays for this and doesn't, well, you know, just get, because Trish, I don't want, you know, what if he gets seven years and then gets let out in three and some bullshit thing? Like what, you know, it, it should, I hope that if it's proven in a court of law, I hope that he gets what's just for the, for those alleged crimes because they're horrible. 
And let me tell you, that little smirk on his little yep. fat face is going to be yep. wiped off once he's put in prison. Yes, you know, it is. Gonna be and really he'll, be, he'll be welcome to the real world, and he won't be able to send Scientology's little spies out to terrorize these gals and have them poison their pet and exactly. literally and terrorize them. Yeah. Well, we have to say allegedly because right. they're in a civil suit, and it hasn't been proven. But I hate but come that. On. I, I hate that fact, Trisha. Yeah. I just want to say, yes, that's what happened to him. I know. You know they're not lying. No. And um, again, this is Scientology's world is starting to crumble uh, because of this, because finally now people are seeing and not taking uh, the what Scientology is, is trying to do to them. They're standing up to him. Like you said, like Rhea, Leah Remini, you know, mm -hmm. you got to love her, man. You, and you I do. She's got balls of steel. Well, and you too. I mean, you're, you're I'm just a bit player, man. I, I, I look up I the when I was I was literally shaking mm -hmm. when Leah's show was on and going clear. And every time I'd watch these episodes and I watched Going Clear 50, 100 times, I don't know, I would, as they say in Scientology, get charge removed from my mind. In other words, um, I don't use Scientology terms anymore. I'm just being tongue in cheek, but right. in other words, I was like it was healing me every single time I watched it. And I cried constantly. I cried for years uh, coming out of this so thing, but sorry. it felt great. No, it felt great because Scientology shut down my emotions and it made me what's called a secondary sociopath. I'm not one, but it made me into a pseudo one until I extracted myself. So when my emotions came back and I could actually feel things that I didn't even know was in me, mm -hmm. I was relieved that I wasn't, a sociopath that I could feel things because I didn't right. even real and I was an actor for God's sakes. It's like, you know, I I don't even know how I got as far as I got by having my emotions so shut down. It's a huge thing in Scientology, by the way. Mm -hmm. It makes you entirely unsympathetic and unempathic. And the exact opposite happened. Um, and to a lot of us when we come out of this and emotion surface that we because we thought this cult was fixing our emotional problems. Not only do we have the emotional problems of the mind control and all the crap and try to survive their fair game of Scientology, we have to handle all the emotional problems that we ran away from into the cult for 30 years that led us in there into the first place. So there was like a huge healing process, lots of tears, but healing tears mm -hmm. and also suicide tears because, you know, I was not in a good state of mind for a long, long time. And I, oh. I kind of wanted the pain was too much. And I'm like, I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to, I don't think I can recover from this. And the pain, you know, I, I reached out to my parents a lot and they rebuffed me and I had to learn the hard way that, Oh my God. I, you know, I'm not going to be able to wow. save. It's just a whole long thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and well, and you're doing so incredibly well. And like I said, oh, I, Thanks, I man. was just, uh, when I saw you, I was just, I stopped. It took my breath away how you described how anybody can become a member of a cult. And let's talk about that for a moment. Sure. Because not all cults that I know of use hypnosis, but somehow they're still mm -hmm. able to, to twist people's minds. Tell us your thoughts on that because you, you've been in a cult. How can somebody that seems normal, and let's say they don't use hypnosis, mm -hmm. how can they start believing just something crazy, like a Mooney, for goodness sake, you know? Well, How does that happen? Okay, so people can look at the Moonies, right, and Scientologists and not being a Mooney or Scientologist and go, I don't, I can't relate to that because it's right. too far out there. I'd never fall for that. There Let me go. use a really, really good, ex a simple example that we all know about, the television. I liken, um, if people want to understand Scientology auditing, Trish, this might be, I don't want to like go over anybody's head or sound like, you know, a nutter. So let me like, just say that, um, I, let me keep this simple. I, you know, the Scientology auditing where you hold the soup cans and, mm -hmm. and you work with this other therapist, but you're actually going into a trance and using your creative imagination to run their processes. It's very similar to television in a certain way. And that is in order to go into a hypnosis session, you have to be relaxed and comfortable. So they, you know, when, when people are watching television, for example, they're usually sitting on a couch or they're relaxed or they're half asleep. Maybe they're home from work or whatever. So if you take the news, the newscaster is looking right into your eyes and they're also speaking in a cadence speech pattern. Right. The auditor was trained the same way. Those TRs, that communication course I was telling you about, what when my dad came back hypnotized, mm -hmm. 
we are trained to stare, they call putting your TRs in, directly at the other person. Now, the guy's comfortable, you're staring at him, and the operator, the auditor, speaks in this cadence speech pattern, exactly like the newscaster. Now, those three elements right there are part of what already induces that suggestibility. So that's something that people could relate to. Now, there's more going on in the auditing session. It's not like every time you're watching television, you're getting you know hypnotized by an auditor in Scientology. It's not like that, but it's similar in the fact that all, most people, unless they study this or they get jacked up by it by me, and you know you have to make it your life's business for a while to learn all this stuff that I would have probably been could care less about. Um, we are in, in a suggestible state when we're taking in that stuff from the newscaster staring right. at those with those eyes. Sure. And, and very few people realize um, how much of an impact that has on their subconscious belief system. Mm -hmm. That I, might be why people follow a certain politician or follow a lot of things that might seem crazy to people that can't make sense of it. Otherwise they heard it on the TV. And it seems innocent, right? Even the advertisements, they're innocent. I mean, I'm not going to go out and buy a product because I keep hearing repetition of I need mm -hmm. to buy ivory soap. But yes, you will. Because people, you know, advertisers did not spend millions of dollars uh, working this out just to make some jingle that's going to irritate people. It works. It works, right. And people might be uh, trained in how to get somebody to feel like uh, they are your friend and what they're mm -hmm. saying is true and you just need to believe me and follow me and la di da di da and it could be something just uh, methodical and kind of a, a like you said a cadence it's a I'm a good person and here's what we're going to do and yeah I can see that well another part Trish is like cult members like I can only speak from my example in Scientology but they're pretty similar across the board the brainwash members themselves have already been through the courses and training and they know and have been programmed to believe in what they're selling. And L. Ron Hubbard had sales techniques that he stole from, psychology techniques and everything that he trained us on. Mm -hmm. So once you've captured the hearts and minds of a Scientologist, they're very convincing about what they believe in. Let me give you that. Let me tell you what happens in the ruins so people can understand how this process, how this slow process works. Okay. Do you want me to just give it, just break yes. down? Like, let's say you were off the street and I'll just take I'm, I'm, I walk in and I say, hey, tell me about Scientology. Okay. First of all, they would size you up and just see, you know, uh, if you're there to document them and expose them. Because, you know, they're they're paranoid about people coming in with hidden cameras stuff. So they'd see if you legitimately were interested in Scientology or if you're just going to make fun of them. That's a real thing. So mm -hmm. if they suss that, you know, you're upstat, as they say, they would say, Trish, why don't you come into this room over here, here, fill out this 200 question personality test. And then when you're done, let us know. And we'll go over the results and we'll tell you, you know, what, if you have any problems or what Scientology could possibly help you with. And these people in general are very friendly. They put the most attractive girls and or guys up at the front to pull people in. And they will put the most dynamic people that they have at the front who will enthusiastically and very confidently, because again, they, they believe that getting you, Trish, into Scientology today and onto this communication course is helping to clear the planet, which needs to be done yesterday. So they're they're very conv convincing um, on what they're trying to sell you. Mm -hmm. So after you fill out these 200 questions, which are very odd and they're designed to get inside your head, they're designed to throw you off balance. I don't remember exactly what they are, but I'm going to paraphrase one of them. Um, and you answer yes, no, and maybe on these questions. One of them is, do you spend an exorbitant amount of time looking through railway dictionaries? By the way, these were in the 1950s, so the terminology is a little funky. Right. Well, automatically, look at that you know, look on your face. Like, what the heck does that mean? And you yeah. have to fill out yes, meaning uh, I do, no, or maybe, right? Um, they're really vague questions. I'm going to eventually do a video on this, but that's a key part of already throwing you off balance to now, now after that, they um, have you fill out a um, a pseudo IQ test, which is just this really lame fake uh, IQ test. By the way, that personality test is called the Oxford Capacity Analysis. Mm -hmm. The Oxford is thrown in there to make it sound legitimate. It has nothing to do with Oxford. Oh, really? Scientology has nothing to do with science, even though it has the word science in it. 
he was really good at using uh, words to make you think it's something scientific. Scientology mm -hmm. sold completely as a science. It's not a faith. It's not a religion. It's a technology for everything you want to handle in your life. And it will set you totally spiritually free. And it's never been discovered before in, in the history of mankind. That's what was sold to me. That sounds outlandish, right? But okay. So yes. you've got your 200 questionnaire. You're a little spaced out on what the hell did I just go through? You got your IQ test that you filled out. And then they're going to take you into a locked room. And I explained this in one of the videos. Let's say um, I'm the person that's going to you know, take you into this room. I would make sure that let's say the exit's back here. You would, def you would be sitting in front of me because I'm going to push your buttons is what they call it in Scientology. A human mm -hmm. translation is try to find your vulnerability using this graph from this personality test that you just filled out. So they know that you're possibly going to become re-stimulated, another Scientology word. You're going to maybe want to leave. You're going to kind of go, I don't want to do this. And you're going to get up and want, want to leave. One of the things they teach you in Scientology is everybody has this reactive mind. And if you, Trish, want to leave, it's because you're being re-stimulated and your reactive mind is making you want to go and not hear the further information. So they'll do anything to stop you. And they're purposely placed between you and the door because if you get up, they're trained, again, in that communication course, how to physically put their hands on you and sit your ass back down and continue on with this evaluation. So they look at you and it's like um, it's like doing a cold reading. There's a little bit of accuracy on how to pinpoint um, your weaknesses a little bit on that personality test, but not much. It's mostly just cold reading. And it's all centered around getting you mostly onto this communication course. That's probably what they're going to try to sell you. Okay. So, so I would say... Trish, here's the graph. It says over here, you're really active, uh, which is good. You can get things done and you're productive and everything. But over here, it's lower on the graph and it says you have problems communicating. Um, and that could, and then that they'll be, look, does that affect her or not? Or, and then they'll go along this graph. And one or two of these items is probably going to indicate to you just by the sheer, you know, just, you could probably say, I see you have problems communicating, Trish, to anybody. And they would say, right, right. Yes, you're, right. you're right, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so then they go, if you could communicate better, how do you think that would help you out in your life? Oh, it would be great. Probably be able to make more money, right, Trish? Absolutely, yeah. If you could confront people and look people in the eye and not turn away and feel really confident about yourself, that would increase your survival, right, Trish? This Absolutely. Is how I'm getting all excited now. Yeah. Uh, well, so, and then this is the, they look right into your eyes, just like that newscaster mm -hmm. and what, what they call in Scientology tone 40. I know these are stupid terms, but tone I will want people okay. to hear up. That's the highest intention you can have. Mm -hmm. So with intention and malice of forethought, once you're um, once they can see that you're on the hook a little bit, they say, Trish, Scientology can handle that. And they do it as penetrating as possible. Very similar to what I just did to get a reaction out of you to have, you know, power. It's all seems right. so stupid now, but I'm telling you, when I was in that room, this was very effective after they right. had my ruin. Right. So for fifty dollars and we can get you signed up today. Um, we can get you on this communication course. Here's some of the success stories. Did you know John Travolta and Tom Cruise are in Scientology? Did you know that Tom Cruise has dyslexia and this um, communication course and study technology fix that? And that's why he's so successful today. Wow. Some of the most successful people in the world, businessmen, um, actors or whatever, are Scientologists. So will that be cash or credit? <laughs> that's basically I'm it i'm hooked i'm like i want to be like john travolta and, and tom cruise you, hell you can see what would happen right yeah. it's not like they're hitting you with crazy stuff and it's not like you're being hit with xenu you don't get into any of the crazy salacious crap that they always talk about scientology so mm -hmm. you're well indoctrinated so you would go on to this communication course you would stare across. I, I break this down in a video called Theta Trap, by the way. Mm -hmm. it is, it's all about because it's too long to, and complex to explain. But basically, you're going to stare at another person uh, for hours on end until you go into a trance, start to hallucinate. Mm -hmm. I did this with oh my, my sister. She started to shape shift into all these different creatures. And you basically, you go into uh, an ecstatic state of mind. Being in a trance feels good. And it's, it's also being disassociated. And it can feel uh -huh. like like you're on drugs. So once you, so you would go on this communication course 
And sooner or later, because you don't pass it unless you go into this altered state of, state of right. consciousness and say, I had a win. So you would have some very interesting, amazing things, amazing things happen to you on this communication course if you didn't know what was happening to you. And then you would attribute that ecstatic high that you just got going into a trance to the power of Scientology. That to me, Trish, was the main hook. Like, I'm not sure the choruses and the love bombing mm -hmm. and the boiling the frog in, in hot water, you know, slowly. I'm right. not sure that any of that would have actually worked for me because I was resistant to, I was still resisting. What changed my mind about everything when I was around, I don't know, maybe 12 or 13 and I got my first auditing session. Again, that's the soup cans and the e-meter. And I just got blown out of my mind because to keep it real simple, they set you down in that chair, get you comfortable, speak into you in the cadence speech pattern, get you set up on the e-meter. It's a whole process to get the light trance state going. And then they use your own creative imagination to eventually send you all the way into quote unquote past lives where you're literally just pulling shit out of your ass and making stuff up with the encouragement <laughs> of the auditor. The auditor is saying it reads on the meter. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you see. Oh, God, I, I don't know. I see a building and this and that. So slowly but surely, you learn to take as real mm -hmm. your imagination. Right. So once you cross over that line, which, again, it's so slow, Trish, and it's so nicely laid out with mm -hmm. the communication course. We'll get your business thriving with these ethics conditions. We'll get you making more money. And they do. My dad started to do better. I mean, we went from him having to borrow money from my brother to he's – very well off nowadays. And he would attribute that all to Scientology. So with John Travolta, that's why he can't leave despite, you know, the deaths in his family, which were right. somewhat Scientology related, uh, yeah. possibly. Um, no matter what, you, you, unless my dad, Tom Cruise, John Travolta, hit some point where it broke them so badly, where it was, you know, Mike Rinder had to get to the point where he would rather die basically than be in this freaking thing. Yeah. And that's yeah. the point, you know, I hit subconsciously before this book was dropped off. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, short of that, once that mind virus gets in your mind, once they grab a hold of your mind and they sell you real slowly with these real cute little, you know, things to help you out, you're going to attribute everything good that happens to Scientology, everything good that happens to your life to the cult, everything bad that happens to you is your fault. So, you're being trained to look negatively at the outside world. You get an elitist attitude that only you have the secret answers. Nobody else knows about this. Nobody else can go free without going up the bridge. Mm -hmm. And once those elements are inside of you, you're screwed until you get, you either die, you have a nervous breakdown, or maybe once, you know, a miracle, you get somebody right. to just randomly drop the book up. And I happen to break through the programming enough to even read the freaking thing. Cause I told you I was going to report that guy. I only read it. Because I was just, the hours kept going by. It was late at night. I'm like, it's too late to go down to Celebrity Center. That's a Scientology Center here in LA right. to report this guy. And I was just like, oh, fuck it. I'll read it. You know, um, mm -hmm. I know this guy's full of shit. I'll report him in the morning. Right. And I swear, 20 minutes into this freaking thing, I had a heart attack. And I, my life's never been the same since that day. Thank it was just goodness. He brought, he brought that off. Thank yeah. God. He was really kind of doing it, um, not necessarily as a right? good Samaritan. Yeah. But irregardless, it doesn't matter because um, the message was sent. You know, I got the message and I, I thanked them a million times for that, you know, That's for doing amazing that. How, how one action can really change a person's it, life. It's well, true. I, I, Doug, I mean, I could go on all night long. I, I want to ask I really, you one more question sure. and then I want to bring you back again because we still. Sure. Anytime. So anytime. You like I'd love to talk but, to you. OK. If somebody has a loved one that mm -hmm. is not even, I'm not even talking Scientology right now, but is in a cult type situation where, and, and I, what I consider a cult is uh, when you're looking at somebody and they're telling you lies, it's obviously they're lying to you, but you believe them no matter what the evidence around shows you. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with getting them away from that, pulling them away from that, that, that magnet of lies how do, you, how do you do it? I swear to God, if I knew the answer to that, I would probably be a multimillionaire. Oh, because true. how many people could use that service? And, it, you know, I've, I've, I've wrestled with that a lot. I've read a lot of books and everything that have suggestions. For example, this com combat thing called Mind Control book says you have to ask 
penetrating but non-challenging questions to someone to get because as soon as you threaten someone on their belief system that they've already been programmed they're gonna shut down again the thought terminating cliches right trish is attacking me on my belief i'm gonna she's wrong 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 so you can't get through the programming that way so you can sideswipe it you, you i think you have to actually care about the person too and then also yeah. i'd warn people that you have to have your own house in order because I've seen many people that are just as brainwashed go try to de-brainwash someone else. So you better know, like, really have your yourself together to, I feel, genuinely want to help someone. Because mm -hmm. most people, myself included, I just wanted to attack my parents and show them all. I, I had a meeting with them. I finally got a meeting with them where I broke all this information down, all this evidence where there's no way they're going to be able to deny right this. and and but they but they did because i was an amateur i you know mm -hmm. um you have to really actually care about the person i think it could be it, it's a patience process it's dropping seeds it's it's questioning them every time you see them uh, just dropping you know new questions not threatening them becoming you know being a true friend to them i don't think there's any other way to honestly do it and then i also believe that it's really frustrating to watch our friends, especially, you know, I had to really learn this the hard way. My parents have every right to actually be a Scientologist. Sure. And I wanted to play God and impose my will on them. Mm -hmm. But I thought about it. It's like, I was just doing the same thing to them, but I needed them to get out of Scientology for me to be okay. Right. For them to come to terms with how much they wronged me and how, look at what you did to me. But you know what? Like they take the consequence of that choice every day that they're in Scientology. That's something I wouldn't trade with them for the world. Right. So like I said, I have to get, just had to eventually get my own house in order mm -hmm. and maybe you, another way, Trish is setting an example, speaking out. I try to do a YouTube channel. You never know who's going to come across it. It's just not about Scientology because people will be able to relate people in an abusive relationship and any other sure. yeah, exactly. whatever, they'll be able to relate to all because it's all the same playbook mm -hmm. more or less some culture more controlling and extreme than others by the way but mm -hmm. again if people really want to know i just say this book because it's there are certain checklists you know charismatic leader uh, hypnosis can be a part of it the love bombing there are like an actual characteristics where you can go i, I dude ask this guy i want to know now if i'm going to call after listening to this conversation just pick up that book and you'll, you'll know, you know, you okay. won't have to wonder. We'll put, we'll definitely put the link in the description. And of course I'll put the link to your YouTube channel and uh, Doug, I can't thank you enough. You, again, thank you for having me on. Really, really well, you really moved me uh, with, with your story. And I would encourage everybody to go to your channel because there's so much more. I mean, we've barely touched the surface mm -hmm. and it's a compelling very dramatic story and uh you're you're doing a lot of good my friend so thank you i'll have you much. on again very thank soon very i much. promise okay have a good night my friend take care bye bye, right, bye. thank you was that stacy no yeah, yeah. That's Stacey. <laughs> hi stacy I always Hi. Like shot here. <laughs> Thanks for coordinating all this she's great isn't she she's she is awesome, awesome. Okay, take thank you bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. Oh my gosh, isn't he wonderful? Uh, I, wow. You guys, I, and I, I was indulging myself because I could listen to him forever. I mean, I've been watching ever since I ran across him, just accidentally. And uh, I, I hope, and it's apparently in chat, people are feeling the same way. He's really just an amazing man. And uh, again, that's just barely touching just touching the surface of his amazing story. So I'll put the link to his um his YouTube channel and the link to the book 